homelessness. We've talked about this before. I presented my thesis a while back that homelessness is uh, driven by the cost of housing. And indeed, the solution to homelessness is simple, straightforward, uh, increase the quantity of housing uh, available, and, um, and homelessness as a problem really would go away. And there's a lot of skepticism about this. A lot of people say, no, it's a mental health issue. No, it's a, it's a drug issue and, and so on. And so I was, I was particularly pleased this morning to see a uh, substack on the NOAA, NOAA opinion um, uh, substack from uh, Aaron Carr, who is an expert on, on, on homelessness, basically making the same point I made a while back, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I can't even tell. Uh, regarding homelessness and basically saying um, the title is everything you know about homelessness is wrong. It's housing, people. Um, and he goes through all of this. So he, he says, you know, um, claim, you know, there's a claim out there. And this is, I'm reading from Noah's, and Noah has this guest writer, uh, Andrew Aaron Carr, um, who is writing about this. So, so he, he says homelessness is, you know, people say homelessness is a, uh, is a mental health problem. Well, the problem is that it doesn't, there's no evidence of this. Uh, a, a vast majority of homeless people don't have severe mental health issues. It's less than one third of uh, the people. I know uh, Schellenberg, uh, the guy who ran, ran for uh, governor of California, who's very good on energy issues, was making uh, the point about mental health and the state needs to provide mental health facilities and it's all a problem of mental health. That's just not true. Um, the reality is that 100% of homeless people can't afford housing, but less than a third of them have mental health issues. Um, and, and there's just no relationship between the two things. If you look at mental health issues, um, there are uh, states in the union uh, where mental health issues are significantly more acute than, let's say, California and New York, where there's a homeless problem, um, like Mississippi, which has probably the worst healthcare system in the America, has uh, real problems of mental health, but has the lowest homelessness rate in the country. So there's just no relationship that you can find in the data, in actual data, between homelessness and mental health. Um, there, was, uh, th there was this idea that deinstitutionalization deinstitutional that happened in the 1980s or the late 1970s uh, caused homelessness. But this theory is largely being discredited. It, it, it's just, again, not based on facts. It kind of seems attractive and seems kind of intuitive, but it just didn't happen. At the time, particularly in the 1970s, uh, a lot of the people deinstitutionalized de found cheap housing because there was lots of it. Homelessness is directly correlated with the decline in affordable housing, decline in cheap housing. And I gave the reasons why there's no cheap housing um, uh, on the show I did about homelessness. Um, so, um, now it's true that some people might become homeless uh, partially because of mental illness or, or, or they don't have a job, partially because of mental illness or they can't make enough income, partially as a consequence of mental illness. But ultimately, they can't afford a home. And the question really is, why can't they afford a home? And part of the problem might be that they can't get a job. Uh, or, but then, you know, the United States is unbelievably generous in terms of um, welfare. The challenge is not the mental health issue. The challenge is, is the cost of housing. Or there's the claim that homelessness is primarily a drug problem. But again, only 20 to 40 percent of homeless people suffer from substance abuse issues, drugs or alcohol. And yet, it's not clear if they take drugs or alcohol, if, if taking drugs and alcohol causes them to be homeless, or whether being homeless causes them to use drugs and alcohol. There is plenty of evidence that homelessness is indeed the reason they take drugs. 
So while well, some people become homeless partially due to drug addiction, many others develop drug addiction as a result of becoming homeless. And again, the statistics go, do not suggest that uh, drug abuse is what causes people to be homeless. Uh, claim three is homelessness is primarily a poverty problem. Again, it, it just doesn't stand scrutiny. Uh, poorest state in the union is Mississippi. Not a lot of homeless people in Mississippi. Uh, relatively uh, rich states uh, where there are a lot of homeless people. Um, give you some examples. Detroit is a high poverty city. 31.8% of the population lives in poverty. But they have among the lowest homeless rates in America. San Francisco, on the other hand, very few people live in poverty, about 10%, but they have the highest, among the highest rates of homelessness in America. So there's just no correlation, there's no relationship between rates of poverty and uh, homelessness. Or maybe it's a weather issue. You know, it's warm outside, so what the hell? Why not be homeless? But uh, California's always been warm, and it never used to have a homeless problem. And indeed, there's a big homeless problem in New York. There's a big homeless problem in Vermont. Um, and uh, Massachusetts, all places that are not particularly warm. And again, there are places that are pretty warm. I don't know, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Not ho no homeless problems. I don't think there's a big homeless problem in Arizona. So, but, but what can you say about those states? Mississippi, Arizona, Alabama. Homes are cheap, a lot of cheap housing, a lot of cheap housing. Or maybe it's blue cities. The problem is blue cities, all these progressive policies causing homelessness. Well, if you look at blue cities like Detroit and Chicago, they have very low homeless rates, very low homeless rates. And cities like San Francisco and New York, that's also blue, have high homeless rates. But what's different is that Detroit and Chicago have lots of housing and cheap. San Francisco and New York have a shortage of housing and expensive. So the conclusion that he comes to in the substack, homelessness is primarily a housing problem. Unlike poverty and mental illness and drug abuse and weather and welfare benefits and other factors, the places that have the highest housing costs and the least housing supply have the largest homeless population. So I told you this a few months ago. Um, it's nice to see some of my ideas, and, and my idea wasn't original. I picked it off from an essay from decades ago, and, uh, and you know, it's nice to see kind of a mainstream. Noah is a center-left economist. It's nice to see uh, kind of a mainstream economist picking up on this. Uh, you know, here's a quote from The Economist. Uh, quote, few Americans lived on the streets in the early post-war period because housing was cheaper. Back then, only one in four tenants spent more than 30% of their income on rent, compared with one in two today, 30% of their income. The best evidence suggests that a 10% rise in housing costs in a pricey city promotes an 8% jump in homelessness. And by the way, by building more homes, by increasing home supply, Atlanta has reduced homelessness by 40%, Houston has reduced it by 63%, Finland has reduced it by 75%, Tokyo has reduced it by 80%. You didn't know that Tokyo had a homeless problem, but they did. When? When housing prices went through the roof. All right. Um, so if, if, if you want to solve the, uh, the homeless problem, as I think all of us want, because having homeless people in the streets is, is a very unpleasant thing. The solution is simple. Deregulate housing. Deregulate zoning. Allow builders to build. Uh, you'd probably also have to increase immigration so you bring in of, of, of low-skilled labor so you can bring in construction workers uh, because there are not enough workers in the United States and build, 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 build homes. 
build homes of all kinds. It doesn't have to be low-income homes because that's if you build high-income homes, people move into high-income homes, and there's this chain reaction where people vacate uh, lower, lower, lower quality homes, and basically you create low-income housing. So um, just build, build, build. That is the solution. Um, and by the way, uh, you know, as Colleen says, Colleen says it seems like. Uh, let me just click on that. It seems like mental health, drug, and poverty all play into the issue a little. But if there was a cheap home solution, these people would be cared for um, and housed by charities. Yeah, and exactly. It's much easier to deal with the issue of mental health, drugs, and even poverty once somebody lives in a home, once they have that stability of having a roof above their head, once they're not roaming the streets. And again, roaming the streets is likely to create depression. Roaming the streets is likely to create drug abuse. So the way to deal with the drug abuse and the, if, if you're going to help people, get them into a home, not by giving them a free home like they do in Los Angeles, but by creating a supply of, of, of low-income houses and get them working. Plenty of jobs in the United States still today, as you know, until we go into a recession, they're going to continue to be plenty of jobs. And get them a job, get them producing income, get them living in a home um, and, and sustaining themselves. Then, if they need help through charities, you can provide help with the drug abuse. You can provide help with, um, uh, with, the, uh, with the mental health. Okay, just wanted to pat myself on the back uh, in a sense that um, uh, great confirmation for uh, a thesis I presented. Um, and again, nice to see these ideas being advocated by mainstream people because then maybe there's a chance um, that, um, you know, that, that these ideas, that some of these solutions get implemented. And, um, you know, and there's, there is now a movement among, primarily among, I'd say, center left, center right people uh, called Yes in My Backyard. A lot of the building stoppages, right, stoppages, um, you know, a consequence of the not in my backyard. And now there's a movement of yes in my backyard, which has the potential of really increasing the supply of housing and, and solving much of this problem. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.